Wow, I can't believe it's 73 degrees today, Fahrenheit, on March the 30th. That's very unseasonably warm. Today, worried about my hives. I'm using this one to kind of tell me what all my other hives are doing as well because they're all about the same shape. So one of the things I'm gonna be doing today primarily, you know, I always say you guys, let's look for one thing when we go in there, particularly one thing. Today, looking for swarm cells. We're trying to see if this hive is ready to swarm. That means all my other hives are ready to swarm. So we need to do something. So today gonna to be kind of painstaking to go through every frame and push bees around a little bit. I brought out my bee brush. Uh, happy Saturday to all of you. Hope you're doing great today. Good to be with you. I've been really busy lately doing a bunch of stuff on um, podcasts, Reddit, YouTube, radio interviews, speaking engagements. So it's very good to be back in the hives and uh, enjoying looking into the bees. You know, um, one of the most enjoyable things for me to do as a beekeeper is always be right here inside my hives. Now, I like making videos, but I like being inside my hives more. So I'm happy that I can combine my videography with being in a hive. So I make videos for your benefit, but for my benefit, I just love working a hive. So today I'm gonna to light my smoker up. Let's get to work. Bobblehead David has his bee suit on and he's encouraging you guys to please subscribe. And look at the bees, they are busy. Oh, a drone just came back, wow. All right, that means I'm probably gonna find queen cells in there. Look at the pollen coming in. Now, I got a alert on my weather app that says pollen alert. A lot of pollen out there today. Cedar, juniper, and elm pollen is what my alert is. As you can see here, there's another drone coming in. Oh boy, let's get in here and look for queen cells. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is smoke the entrance. It's where some of the guard bees are gonna be. This would be a good video for those of you that are new to beekeeping. And also those of you that are multiple year beekeepers wondering, how do I check for queen cells? And are they gonna swarm? Yikes. Now the next thing you want to do is smoke under the top cover, but we can't just yet because we have a winter be kind on here. And I suspect the winter be kind is, I'm taking a guess, but I suspect it's empty. Probably not any sugar at all. There's ladybugs up at the top. And I'm afraid they might have built wax, built some comb. If they emptied it, ate it, they might have built some comb in here this time of the year. Let's see, so now's a good time to smoke. So what we'll do, go to the back of the hive to work it, lift it up and smoke. Now this is your top cover, you'd wanna smoke under the top cover or the inner cover. And then I like to let it down a little bit, give the smoke a minute to work, yeah, 15 seconds to work. Then we can remove it. Okay, no comb up here, that's good, but it, it is empty. How do you check for queen cells? Well. We're gonna start up here in the super since it presents itself to us first. And uh, not wearing a bee suit today, just a hat and a veil, no gloves. And so what we'll do, hey, look at this. I got my big smoker going today. And the big smoker says Beak Squad, those of you that follow my channel. And of course it says subscribe. And last year I, I ran a new smoker all year long. And at the end of the year I met a young man when I was speaking at the Honey Bee Expo in Louisville, and uh, I got home and sent him my smoker. I thought it would kind of, he admires me on YouTube, and I thought it'd encourage him to continue his beekeeping pursuits. All right, so here we have a frame of honey, probably left over from winter, and no sign of eggs in this frame and no beetles. Shh, I, sh I can't say that, I shouldn't jinx it, right? No small high beetles. <laughs> oh, they're in there, I'm sure. How often should you smoke your hive when you're working your bees like this? Well, if you wanna go gloveless, minimal protection, you're gonna take, gonna require a lot more smoke. Um, it depends on how agitated, defensive your bees are when you're working them. Um, some of you, uh, Enjoy me just kind of walking you through what I do when I do an inspection like this. So I hope you're enjoying that. I want to show you, can you see this piece of green? 
something, something green right there. That's a pollen grain. I'll smash it. You can see it's kind of a, just a grain of pollen way up there on top. Imagine that. They just got that. Was it elm? Oh, look at the green pollen in this honeycomb. Whoa, whoa. Wow. Do you see all that green pollen they placed in there? There's our small height beetle. I'll be back after I smash it. <laughs> it's like, I'm going after that one beetle. Where did it go? It was around, oh, is that bee trying to get it down in there? No, that, was, that bee was working pollen. Oh, there it is, right here. Oh, look at that. There's that beetle on my hive tool. And I got it, look at that. Beetle in parts. Every beetle that you kill, uh, you could be saving yourself a lot of headaches. There's a bunch of beetles over here. I shouldn't say a bunch, but certainly two. Ooh. <laughs> it's hard to hang on to a frame and kill beetles at the same time. You can kind of get distracted chasing them, and then before long you're going to drop your frame or something. All right, I got that one. I think there's one over here left. Yep, Let's see if I can get, get that beetle. You have to destroy some comb sometimes to get them, but I feel like the bees can rework that comb pretty quick. You hear that wind? It's windy today. Oh, good. I love it when they walk out on the board. I can smash it real easy then. All right, well, I've killed four barehanded. I just think that's the tip of the iceberg. And the video is going to be hours long if I chase beetles all day. Oh, I thought I saw queen cells. That's what we're looking for. But um, I do see eggs and larvae down um, in, in this frame. So I know the queen's up in the top. When I saw those drone cells there at the bottom, I thought, oh, oh, queen cell. Now there's a queen cup right there. Let's see if there's anything in it. No, I can see down in it. The bees looking in there, there's nothing there. And that's just a glob of drone brood on the bottom of that frame. But then, anyway, that's a good eye. Look at the green pollen up in this corner here. Wow, you see that? Some orange too. Look at the little bit of brood up there, capped over and eggs. Yeah, I love this so much. Let's smoke again. I get, sometimes you get just fascinated with the bees. Um, and all at once, you don't realize that time has gone by and your smoker might have ran out or you need more smoke. By the way, if you notice here, oh, there's pollen grains on top here. Maybe fell out when I lifted my frame out. But what else falls out is nectar. And so this is a drop of nectar. We wonder what, you know, what uh, mixture we could, should feed our bees, but look at that. That's just nectar probably. And you know, if you lift it up a frame of nectar and shake it, it, uh, it just comes out really easy. I don't want to do it now, but look at the good brood there. Okay, no queen cells on the bottom. A lot of brood, larvae in different stages. I guess I should look for the queen. A lot of active drones. Drones are flying, probably hitting the mating uh, drone congregation areas. I believe this queen is marked, right? Do you remember? Look at that beautiful pink pollen right there. It's cool. And glistening larvae. Had four small hay beetle, killed them. Haven't seen another one. And there's a bee to the rescue like, hey, let's clean this up. David dropped a drip. So let's get that cleaned up for him. Any queen cells on the bottom? Nope. Purple-eyed pupa drone. That looks like a queen cell, but it's not. Now this could be, let me show you. You know, obviously we have a queen cup here. It's not charged. I don't know who came up with that word, but I kind of like it. Is it charged? But there's something over here of suspicion right there. If you see down in there, I see larvae. I see world jelly, that, my friends, right there, queen, swarm cell, cup. <laughs> All right, so there you go. 
All right, so, oh, we're in that season, aren't we? I bet it gets a lot worse as we get into the deep below here. Same thing again, we're looking uh, kind of down on the bottom of these uh, frames to see any queen cells, but we're looking all over as well. Uh, don't really see much in the way of queen cells. Uh-huh, on this side we do. Let me turn things around so I can get a better grip on it. Oh, almost smashed a bee accidentally. I would almost call that right here a queen cell, but it's not, it's not vertical. It's horizontal, and it's torn open. If it's a queen cell, the queen is out. That's one of these things that's really hard to understand, but I think, I think if you look at this, this is how I learn. I compare, right? I look at that, and it looks just like this. The same thing, I think. So we're going to go with that, but here's a cup here. And that cup has nothing in it, but it's a swarm cell cup. Oh, I love working bees. When I film like this, I always have to stop and check my camera, make sure it's running, um, make sure it doesn't overheat, make sure the battery's going. So a little distracting. Don't get to enjoy inspecting bees as much if I wasn't filming. Sometimes I filmed and captured great things and all at once I realized my camera went off that's a little frustrating did I already look at this I'll look at it again because I'm unsure bees are playing with that queen cup there on the bottom let's see if I can move them out of the way why are they in there oh, there's nothing in there So I don't really see any swarm cells there. So we just have one suspect swarm cell so far in the upper super. A lot of brood up here, so that's why there could be swarm cells. Here's where we get into our beetles over here on the edges, usually. Honey left over from winter, kept over. A lot of drone brood at the bottom. Bees look great and healthy. Same on this side, no swarm cells. Uh, making sure, I see a cup. Let me check what's in it. Cup is empty, so nothing to be alarmed of there. No eggs, well, maybe there was a frame of eggs. Okay, so now we're back over over there just to honey frame, so we're not concerned about that. So what we're gonna do now is move everything back take the super off. Let's don't leave these frames carelessly uh, not tightened together. So let's make sure everything is tight so they don't build any weird comb. Sometimes people have trouble with their hives building stray comb or columns and all. And oftentimes it's because frames aren't tight enough together. Not always, but let's at least alleviate that possibility. So in order to get our super off, let's smoke the top of it. Then we'll go to the back of the hive and we'll put our hive tool in the back, back here, lift it up enough to loosen it and put some smoke in there. While I don't like to set it back down because I'll smash bees. I've got my winter bee kind I took off and I'll just set it upright over here on top of the winter bee kind. It's a a great day, bees aren't robbing or anything. All right. So look at that, that's a, um, I think that's a drone pupae that usually the drone, um, a drone larvae, I should say. Um, usually drones like that are on the, kind of like the bottom of cell frames. And when you pull a super apart, sometimes you dislodge the drones like that. But in case you see something like that, it is a bee. And I'm betting pretty strongly it's a drone uh, larvae or pupae. Pre-pupa stage, can't really tell. All right, now we're in our deep. We're hoping to find the queen. What we also want to do while we're here is kind of look for 
the possibility not only of queen cells, but of isolating our queen in the brood area and not let her get back up in that top deep anymore, or top super anymore. Turn that into honey. So that's probably something that's time to do. I'll grab a queen excluder and we'll do that too. My propolis is, yeah, sticky today, sticky today. I want to show you all the different pollen bees are bringing in. My camera is too close. Let's back this camera up a little bit. Sorry, it's a one-man show, people. One guy does it all. Saves on money. <laughs> I have to pay staff. All right, so look at the pollen in here. You got some pretty orange. We're back to some of that green. It's got to be elm, I think. And uh, I'm looking for eggs, queen cells, queen. Oh, bump my camera. Okay, here we are on this side. Same thing, a lot of pollen. And uh, haven't seen the beetles yet. I'm just celebrating that. Oh, waggle dance. Look at that waggle dance. I'll try to point it out in the video room. Oh, she gave up. She was doing a waggle dance and quit. Well, anyway, look at the bees that have pollen on their hind legs. This is beautiful. If I see a waggle dance, I'll try to isolate it. I don't really see it. We'll leave this frame out of the hive so that we can manipulate our frames more easily without rolling the bees. And what I mean by that is sometimes if, you, if your frames are too tight together, if I were to pull this one up here, it's so tight against the other ones that potentially I could kill bees, even the queen. Um, some of you may be asking how I can work without any gloves on. Um, well, you just do it. You just cowboy up and get her done. Here's a frame that they're, they'll be adding more wax to this year. Obviously they didn't have much on it last year, did they? Man, they have packed the pollen, tree pollen, in there this year. Amazing amount of tree pollen. I'll put this frame back in since I don't have to worry about uh, the space. I can always use the gap that I see now since I took a frame out. Okay, I got drone brood at the top. Let me show you that. This is a good frame to see queen cells on if you haven't. So oftentimes you'll see queen cells on frames that have irregular comb that's shaped at the end like that. I'm gonna show you and then I'm gonna take a look. Ooh, wow, look at that brood. Not bad for coming out of winter. We'll see more solid brood as we get a little deeper. I'm gonna have to change my battery really soon. All right, I'm gonna take a look. So, yeah, I don't see any queen cells. I do see lots of drone cells. Even the ones at the bottom are drone. I've got a good eye for that, people. Remember, I started beekeeping 30 years ago. I'm not bragging, but I've seen a lot in 30 years, and that's not a queen cell on that one. <laughs> I don't know. I can't believe I've kept bees this long. I can't believe I've got old too in the process. Golly, I, those of you that are older than I am, I'm 64 this year, and I don't know how I got this old, especially overnight. Golly, I was a young man and I woke up old. I mean, that's, a, that's what it felt like. Dang. So leave a comment below to help me figure out how to deal with getting old. I don't like it. Look at that larvae in there. Beautiful white glistening larvae. I shouldn't say I don't like being old. Um, I do. I, I enjoy the life that I've lived and I really do enjoy my age. That's okay. Getting old is fine, isn't it? All right. Wow. The tree pollen is insane. This hive is not pollen deprived. The queen's trying to lay eggs in there amongst the other stuff, but she, she's crowded. That's gonna, that's gonna cause a swarm. So we're still looking for swarm cells. Nothing. A lot of pollen, tons of pollen has been brought in. It's amazing. You do an inspection like this, I'm kind of gauging how many frames I need to look at. Like I'm gonna look at about two or three more going this way and then I'll run out of brood. I'll be in the honey over there and I'm not worried about swarm cells over there. 
A lot of these bees are emerging. That's why we're looking at the brood that has emerged, but at the same time, pollen that's being packed in there. And the queen has laid, you see older uh, larvae about ready to be capped over, but she's running out of room here to lay eggs. And that can be an issue too. We're gonna monitor that. No, no swarm cells, no queen, good brood, good food resources of all stages. The, the idea of what you wanna see when you look at frames. Now I'm smoking a little more often here just because we've had the hive opened a lot longer than normal. And um, that's just because we want to do a thorough swarm inspection here and see what we got. Okay, here we have more of the cap brood where the queen was uh, at least nine days ago and laid a bunch of eggs. Now they're capped over, no swarm cells, no queen visible. I don't think she's marked. I'm not looking as hard as I should. I've got my hat and veil on with the uh, plastic uh, visualization so I don't have to really look through a screen. Uh, no swarm cells again. I'm looking carefully. We've got young larvae as you can see in the cells here. So the queen is doing good. Putting these frames back so I don't kill bees. This might be our last frame to look at and now we're going to take off this deep. All right. My fingers are just coated with propolis. And it's hot today. I'm, I bet it's 75 right now. All right, now we got a frame of eggs, larvae in all stages. So this would be a frame that you'd want to see if the queen was on because she was there laying these eggs a minute ago. Okay, maybe a day ago. And got a little brood at the top. I don't see any swarm cells. I don't see the queen. Let's look over here. Same thing. Egg, egg, egg. This is a frame of eggs. I know it's hard to get the camera to focus down in the cells, but I can definitely see. I'm going to move this. I'm going to experiment. Like if I hold it here, do you see eggs? If I hold it here, can you see eggs? But let's just look for the queen real quick. I don't see the queen. And the next frame is all honey. So we're done in this box. Now the reason why we may not find the queen, students, is because when I start shifting these frames back, if the queen is in the bottom deep, she could very easily just walk right up and get into this top deep before I have a chance to take it off. You know what I mean? So the queen, you know, she, she moves around between the two deeps. And so if she's going to walk up into the top deep before I get a chance to take it off, and then I take it off, I don't ever find her in the bottom deep because she just simply outsmarted me and got back up in here. And I could have missed her. So now we're just... Uh, very carefully moving our frames back over. This is a good video for those of you that struggle with being patient while you're uh, doing your inspection. I'm pushing the frames back together so that I don't kill any bees between those little side pieces, the ears of the frame, and I'm smoking down in there to prevent that. There, that worked out good. Now when you do this, you want to give enough room, tighten them up a little bit, so I tighten them up by taking my hive tool and putting it down in there toward the top and just giving it a little tightening push. Excuse me, B, you're in my way. All right, there, that's good. All right, now we got to get our other frame in here. Here we go. The first frame that we took out. All right, let's just look at that again, make sure the queen isn't on there. Oh, that's the pollen, the tree pollen frame, isn't it? Wow, crazy. I got my camera right in the path of where the bees want to come in for a landing. So they're kind of like letting me know when they come in, hey, your tripod is right in our way, David. And I try to be nice and say, hey, 
I make my living on YouTube, so if I'm, you want me to take care of you, I gotta have a place to put my camera. And they're like, all right, whatever. All right. All right, well good, now we're ready to take this deep off. One of the reasons I love working this hive right here instead of those down there is because the winds out of the southwest is blowing right through here and I can stand here and work this hive out of the wind. All right, now I don't want to put my deep on top of that super because it's going to stick to it and it's better for me not to have to deal with that. So I'm going to take my top cover, turn it upside down there, and I'll just land my deep right here. All right, to get this top deep off, we're going to smoke the top of it. Maybe we'll run the queen down, and then we'll put our hive tool on the back. Back here again, loosen her up. Get some leverage where we can keep it at that height there. Let's do a pretty thorough smoke. Smoker's working great, by the way. My smoker fuel of choice is burlap. Wow, love it. Let's just land it right there. Oh, I didn't quite land it. There we go. All right. All right, let's see what we got down here. Remember, what we're doing now is primarily seeing if, uh, if this colony shows uh, swarm preparation. If they do, that means all my other hives do too. So that's really what we're looking for today. Uh, I'm going to work this hive. Uh, I like working it from over there, but uh, I'm going to have to move my camera. Hmm. Yeah, we can work it backwards. It feels awkward working it like this, but I think it's better for the camera, better for you guys. I don't like reaching across the hive like this because it presents too much of my body over the top of the hive. And that could induce the bees to be alarmed and start stinging me. Hmm, what we got, I can't see yet. Oh, I want to take a look at this. Oh, more tree pollen. Yeah. Bees packing it away in there, aren't they? See the little heads down in there? It's packing that pollen down in there. Oh, let's see. Got a waggle dancer. A lot of waggle dancers here. Look at that. Those are ferocious waggle dancers. That means that that bee right there is doing that waggle dance. She is so crazy about what she found and that she's doing that figure eight waggle dance. And so many of them are watching her and getting them, getting it memorized. See that bee watching her? They're just memorizing where she's at, where she's going to get all that. Beautiful, beautiful baby. I can't say enough about how excited I am to be in a hive, working a hive with you guys. And I'm gonna tell you, the live stream is going so well. So many people are excited about the live stream. Oh my gosh, we're, we're enjoying it so much. Amazing too that, um, man, we have such an, a great audience that enjoys popping in on Thursday nights at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. And uh, I've got a special guest coming up this Thursday, if you're watching it when I release this video. And it's Steve Jimenez. I've been wanting to deal with this broken frame for a long time. I don't know if today's the day to do it, but I'm unhappy about that. It's a wax only frame, no plastic foundation wires, and it's just broken at the bottom. Mm-hmm, needs fixed. Shall I fix it on the move? Good question. I can't really tilt the frame sideways or it'll fall off. It's only attached at the top. Makes me hard to see what's in there. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. So what I could do is turn it upside down like this, like you would a top bar hive frame. Handle it like that anyway. I'll smoke the bees that are on it. Keep them kind of calm down. Wow, only, only four small hive beetle. That's all I've seen today. All right, guys, ladies. Move away, please. Okay, that's a staple there. How can I get that to get back in place and stay there? Ooh, well, it's there, but how do I hold it? 
Okay, if I had an air hose long enough to reach here with my staple gun, I could staple it. Hmm. I've got a portable staple gun I'm going to grab. I'll be right back. Okay, got my portable staple gun with half inch staples. I'm going to attempt to do some shooting of staples in here. Hmm, not bad. Oh, it's a little bit off. Move your hand first. Ooh, I like that one. Let's do one over here. I can't really get my safety to go off. Oh, that's a good position. Whoops. Repairing staples on the, or repairing frames on the fly like this. That's a good position. Hold it. Oh, I need to shoot more. I need to bite into that wood over there. See what I can do. Like right here, maybe. Oh, I missed it. Let's try up a little higher right there. I'm empty? What the heck? Let's try it right there. Something's wrong. Is it working? Yeah. It's just not, not releasing the safety. Had it, but got the wrong side of the staple in there. I'm trying to bite into that piece of wood at the same time. There we go. Now oh, I got it. Can I put one in the edge right here? Let's try that. Oh, I can't hold enough pressure on it. Okay, well, that's good enough. That's going to hold it. Get that out of my way now. It's going to be a problem. Hive tool. J hook hive tool. Staple puller. All right. Now, this, now we can sort of trust that, that won't. I'm going to support this frame with my finger in the back and look down in there. That looks like a drone frame. Most of those cells are big, but we did repair it. That's good news. It was a pain all last year. It'll hold, it'll be all right. All right, no queen, no queen cells. Back to what we're looking for now. We do need to smoke these bees. The bees coming in don't have as much area to play with anymore because I've removed, um, you know, the super, the deep on top, where, all the, where they were packing all that pollen. Okay, frame is moderately weighted, which means it might have something on it. Oh, pollen, tree pollen. That shows you, some people think, oh, David, you feed your bees too much pollen. Well, that's tree pollen that they're packing in. Look at it in their back legs. Um, I've never overfed bees pollen because I know what bees eat. And this is what they eat. They just need to have protein, so much protein in the spring. That's why I don't mind feeding them, giving them a little bit of help in the winter. Now, somehow, I'm going to have to have Sherry bring me another camera battery. And I'm trying to figure out how to contact her while I'm out here. Hey, Siri. Call my wife. See if that works. Calling Sherry back. All right. Yeah. Ooh, look at the tree pollen there. Okay. Hey, Sherry. Oh, it's ringing. Hey, Sherry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, can you go upstairs and bring me one of my um, blue, greenish blue batteries or both batteries on the charger in my bookshelf up in the edit room? Okay. Thank you. All right, so we've got a battery coming. Let's get back in the hive here. What do we got? No queen, no swarm cells. Everything looks good. No swarm cells, no queen. Everything looks good. Going back in for a landing. Oof, a lot of bees though. Hard to put that back. I'm gonna, I know I gotta frame out that's different, but I'm gonna, for, for orientation, it doesn't matter. It's just one frame. This allows me 
to play with these frames and not have to shift them all. I can put them back in their position, their final position right now. They're just going to be one frame off. That's not a big deal. I'm loving this. I was talking about live stream. So yeah, Thursday night is a great time to have your questions answered if you get on the live stream. It will be uh, right here in the description. I'd love to have you guys join us. We have a big audience now. All right, would be nice to see the queen. Oh, here's Sherry. You can just lay them on top of my uh, cart there, Sherry. Thank you so much. I'm going to check the battery now on my camera, make sure it's good. Probably just change it out anyway. Okay, we're on camera battery number three, thanks to Sherry. Okay. I did see egg, so I, I know the queen's in there. And she's just on the move, people. If you don't see her, you, we don't have to find her. We're looking for swarm cells. I'm handling my frames in such a way that I can get a grip on them. All right, here we go. I see a cell, and it's right here. So I need to look in there, see what's that, see what that's all about right here. Um, it's dry. Nobody's home. No, no activity there. Scan for the queen. No swarm cells. A lot of drones. Here we are on this side of the page, looking at the bees, looking for swarm cells, looking for queen, looking for eggs, larvae. So I must have missed the queen because all the eggs were up in that second deep. I got a feeling that she was up there. Maybe I'll find her in the edit room. I think she was up there. I was so busy repairing uh, that. Well, I guess I was so busy just looking for Swarm cells, I wasn't paying attention. Maybe to the queen. We might find her down here. Kind of don't think so. Ooh, that's stuck. It's been a while since that's been opened up. This is propolis. It holds all this together. It's very sticky. Part of the bee's natural immune system and bee glue. Keeping the frame together. Okay, getting into the honey and pollen store, so we're not going to see the queen here. No swarm cells, that's what we're looking for. No eggs, no swarm cells. Stored honey from winter. A little bit on that frame. Let's just look at the next one. Probably gonna find the same thing. So look at my fingers, how much, this is all just propolis. Sometimes I can wear nitrile gloves and, uh, but alcohol is gonna knock all this off. Mm. There's easier ways to look for swarm cells. You can just kind of pick up the deep and look at the bottom of it, you know, angle it up, open it up like a book and look in the bottom. But this gives me a visual of everything else going on. Okay, well, that's tight, that's heavy, very heavy. It's full of honey, it's, that's why it's heavy. Yep, that's a honey frame. Okay, let's look at the other side of heavy honey. That's what they had in winter. They never used it's that capping looks fine. Some people say it looks greasy, but it's not brewed, so it's not anything bad. That's just saturated wax from the honey. So we're done looking in this hive. We're not in a swarm situation. So what we're going to do now is try to work that last frame, uh, which we're going to see what was on it, and then we'll know where to put it without having to move all the all the frames again. Let me grab it here. It's a very light frame. Oh, it has pollen on it. So right there would be a great place to put it if I can make a space wide enough without rolling bees. I want to show you a little trick on how you can do this. So to make the most space, if you need to add a frame in the middle, you can take up your frame against the wall temporarily. Like move all your frames tight toward that wall and we're extending the gap, okay? Now, this won't go anymore because I can tell it's solid. It's not gonna come this way. So we have a pretty big gap there. 
two things we're going to do so we don't kill bees by putting that frame in the middle. We're going to smoke heavily here so that we can kind of get the bees to move out of that area. And the next cool thing I'm going to show you that I do is a trick that I bet you've never seen before. Mm hmm. Hang on, I'm getting in the frame in my hand now. It's over here against the wall. So, so you can see how many bees left once I smoke this area. Okay, that's one thing you can do. You can see how many bees left once I smoke this area. Okay, that's one thing. You can do. Now I got bees on the frame. I'm going to insert there, even though I have the space. Look at that. I still have a lot of bees on there. Now let's make sure the queen isn't in that frame. It's a pollen frame. I wouldn't think I'd see the queen in there, but... Okay, no larvae, just pollen. Now, we're going to shake it gently to try to get the bees off of it. We're going to start shaking it gently, and then we'll increase how much we have to shake it to get the bees off. Because the less bees that are on this frame, the less will be rolling. So let's give it a gentle shake. Not when he came off. I don't want to knock all the pollen out. All right, so there we go. So now we can take this. Let's smoke the gap again to get the bees out of there. This is just to help me not roll bees. I got a wide space, no bees on. Oh, there's a beetle though. You know why I feel about beetles. There she is. I won't stop until I get her. Dang. Oh, she flew away. Darn it. Slide this in there. See how tight it is. Now, before I set the ears in position on the rails, I'm going to make sure no bees are there. Boom. There we go. Look at the build up of oh, some fingers. All right, so now we're going to go back to this side of the wall over here, run the bees out of this area. So that we can see what we're doing. Now we're just going to see if we can uh, work our frames a little tighter. Like that. Not much, but just a little. All right. All right, now it's time to put the hive back together. Here we go. Got smoking good. The heat goes on first. You're worried about, you know, bees on your edges. You can just brush them off the edges as best you can. I hate to tell you this, but there's always a chance that the bee's going to get under there when you put it back on. I know we want to avoid that for sure, but watch out, bees. Off my edge, please. I'm coming in. One of the things I'm going to do is slide it in position. That to help the bees get out of the way too. The cameras are in my way. Perfect. Okay. I'll put on my feeder board that I invented, created, whatever you want to call it. I got to test the sugar water that I had on there before, make sure it's not bad. I'm just going to feed them. Put one jar right there for now. Where'd my deep go? Here it is. Put my shell around it. Now, if you're wondering about the hat and veil that I wore today, I made a video a couple of years ago how I took just a little piece of plastic and I just used scissors to my netting out and then I use just silicone to silicone this in there and it works great. It's so much better than trying to look through the screen mesh and if you've never seen that video I'll leave a description I'll leave a link in the description below where you can watch that video and how to make one of these. Now I think some people sell these little things that you can cut and snap them in there so look around but you know do it yourself is always fun for beekeepers. Uh, just to do it yourself. I've got a whole bunch of great tips I want to share with you guys about mite treatment, new controls, uh, treatment controls for uh, the bee season, 
some changes, some new things on the scene. So stick around. But first, I want to show you what my fingers look like. Oh my gosh, it's time to clean my hands off of all this propolis. So what I use is, uh, oh, this is pretty strong, 99% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, that'll cut it. Yep. So um, first thing you want to do is just having some paper towels handy. Um, I don't I probably need these more for drying off. Maybe one to scrub. Smoker might still be hot. By the way, please subscribe. So I just usually take a little alcohol, pour it in my hand like this. It dries so quick, but I got to break down all this propolis, right? And so there you go. You just start weakening it with this uh, alcohol, rubbing it around like that. Man, got to whiff it out of my nose and then I feel like I'm running a moonshine business or something. Okay, so that's breaking it down. Now we're going to use this paper towel to kind of get it off my fingers a little bit. Look at that. That's just all propolis. Isn't that crazy? That hive really makes a lot of it too, doesn't it? I can do it a couple times. And uh, life, I wear that off too after a few days of doing other stuff. <laughs> but one of the ways you can avoid it, and one of the ways that, that's one of the reasons I like to wear gloves. I mean, I got stung once right here, but that was my fault. But I like to wear gloves just so I don't have to clean my, my hands up every time I'm done if I go barehanded. So it's just a little nicer that way. And this alcohol, you know, it's hard on your hands. I mean, it really is. 70% be a little easier, but uh, the reason it's hard, it can dry your hands out terribly um, if you do this very often. So be aware of that. You might have to put something on like a lotion or something to keep your hands from being dried out by using this strong of an alcohol. Man, I can already tell how dry they are. Look at that thumb, I missed it. So it's still a lot of propolis there on that thumb. All right, well, that's an idea of how you clean your hands up if you get a bunch on there. My hands were a mess, but they're much better now. All right, now that I got my hands clean, I'd like for you guys to join me for that video with all the tips on mic control measures you can take in the upcoming season with my host, Dr. David Peck. Take a look at this video. I'll see you guys over there.